Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. You see, we're having some technical difficulties here on today. What amazes me is when you shut your systems down, uh, whatever program that you are working with, they do their own thing. And so when you get ready to turn your systems back on, uh, there are issues. But nevertheless, to God be the glory, I pray that your day is going according to the awesome plans and will of God. And I would like to say thank you to all of you who tune in Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays to The Balance of Life and for allowing us to share with you in the Word of God, you are definitely a part of our ministry family, and we absolutely love and appreciate you continuing to keep you lifted in prayer. And we have some exciting news that we want to share with you. So yesterday we did a thing. Uh, we launched um, ministry with none other than... Uh, uh, Podbean, and so uh, for that, uh, we're only going to look at ministry and just really do some in-depth teaching, and so you will find the information up on our website, uh, and also uh, we're going to get that up on our Facebook page for The Balance of Life, where we are going to just, that particular uh, podcast we are going to just do some really good in-depth teaching. And so I'm so excited about that and want to uh, just share that with you coming up very, very soon. Today, <coughs> excuse me, I want to talk about the truth about faith. The truth about our relationship and what it means to really walk in the fullness of your Christian life. There are some things that we definitely have to do. In order to receive the fullness and live according to the will of God, then we must do the work of the word. And there are certain scriptures that we should be applying to our lives. One of those being, behold in him, you are a new creature. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Behold, old things are passed away. So let's take a look at that. hear my keys I'm typing in online so that we can get to that scripture text so in Christ Jesus we are a new creature so let's go over to the second Corinthians 5 17 and I want to say that we should have this expectation in our life that as we come to Christ Jesus, that we are being born anew, that all things are passed away. Over in 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter, 17th verse says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So what is that saying? That is saying that, I am now in Christ Jesus. I have accepted him to be my Lord and Savior. And in him, I am new. So old things, old things will pass away. Um, which means that my sinful nature, I'm no longer in that era of my life. I no longer do those things that I used to do. 
because I have a new life in Christ Jesus. Through creative command of God, those who accept Jesus Christ by faith are made a new creation that belongs to God totally, his, to God's totally new world in which the Spirit rules. So the things that I used to do prior to coming to Christ... I no longer do those things. This is a truth by, about faith. And so I believe in him. I am reborn. Spiritually reborn. I was once blinded. I was once dead in my spirit. But now I am alive. I have a new life. And in my new life. Since I cannot go a second time into my mother's womb, the physical, and be born again, I can be born again through Christ Jesus, which is a spiritual birth. Now, that question was raised by Nicodemus. How can a, a man be born again? So let's look at that, because that is a very, very good question that many may have. How can I be born again? And we're going to provide you with some scripture texts pertaining to being born again. One of those scripture texts is found over in Romans, the 12th chapter. Second verse, talking about being not conformed to this world. But being ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now over in the book of John, the third chapter, and let's look at the fourth verse. Here is the question asked, how can a man be born again? Because you cannot enter into your mother's womb a second time. So let's start at the first verse. Let's just really look at the background of this. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, Rabbi meaning teacher, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? No. No. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now this is signifying baptism in the Holy Spirit. Some biblical scholars take the water to mean natural birth. Others believe it signifies spiritual cleansing through the word of God. We are cleansed through the word of God. However, in John's gospel, water often refers to the spirit. So, let's look at this. It says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. So, we, we don't want to look at this in a carnal sense, but we want to look at this in a spiritual sense, which when you're talking about being born again... Uh, in, in biblical terminology, to further help us, it is regeneration. Now, uh, let's read about regeneration. Jesus discusses a foundational doctrine of the Christian faith, which is spiritual birth or regeneration. Without the new birth, one cannot see the kingdom of God. How do, how do I receive this new birth? Well, I look at the 16th verse in John 3rd chapter. 
where it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth, that's the key, in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So that is the beginning, which starts with your faith. That is the beginning. It starts with your faith that you believe. I'll read that again. For God so loved the world. So we believe that God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. He loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. That's two things. That whosoever believeth in him. So believeth in Christ. Should not perish but have everlasting life. So I have three things that I must do. That are captivated in the 16th verse of John, the third chapter. And so that is the beginning, my belief system, my faith. Also, the following are important facts concerning the new birth. Regeneration is a recreating of spiritual life in the human heart. So it's what's going on in my heart. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth. That is found over in uh, Romans. The 10th chapter, beginning at the 8th verse. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That is unto salvation. Let's read further to the 10th verse. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So we're dealing with faith and we're, believe, we're dealing with what we believe in our heart. We're dealing with those components. What's going on in our heart? What goes on in a heart affects the mind. And we believe by faith the things that are spiritual. So let's read more about regeneration. Because this is a spiritual thing. Through this process, eternal life from God himself is imparted to the believer's heart. And he or she becomes a child of God. And a new creation in Christ. He or she no longer conforms to this world, we quoted Romans 12 and 2, but is now the new man, which after God created in righteousness and true holiness. So I no longer think and do the way that I did things in my human nature, but I want to do them by my spiritual nature. And what is going on with my spiritual nature, it will also show up in my natural. But I can't take my natural and put it into spirit. I can take my spirit and take it into my natural. My mind, my thought process has to change to things that are Christ-like. Remember the old, I believe it was the thing, what would Jesus do? And so that is renewal of the mind. And so when we get ready to do something, that was a good slogan. That was a good motto. What would Jesus do? Would Jesus do this? Would Jesus do that? When we begin to think along those lines, conviction comes in. Because as we learn and we study about Christ Jesus, we learn that those things that we were doing in our flesh, which are sinful nature, lust of the flesh, no, he would not. And if I'm going to be Christ-like, then I want to model my life after Christ. The truth about faith and this Christian life 
is that we are going to go through a um, a change. It's like the, the butterfly, the cocoon. It starts off with this little thing and then you have a beautiful butterfly. And so you're going to go through a, a, a change in your life of the way that you do things. How you uh, treat and interact with others. How you handle even yourself. And we all, a part of this life of faith, this is what we all go through. This is what we should desire to go through. This is what we should expect to go through. Because as we've read in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that I am now in Christ Jesus. I have accepted him as my Lord and Savior. And so with it comes some changes. As I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and I look at the Word of God, I should expect being made new. I am a new creature. I am born anew. Old things are passed away. And so I should look for that type of change, the old into the new. I should look for that. I should expect it. I should desire it. That is the truth about faith. Expect, look for, want, desire, change of Christ-like nature, Christ-like characteristics to manifest in your life. And sometimes we don't look for that. Sometimes one may feel that I have accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and they go no further. We are all given a measure of faith, which is faith to believe that God gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We were all given that measure of faith. But it does not end there. As we look and study the Word of God, what we are looking for is a change. And so Nicodemus wanted to know, how do I experience this change that you are teaching about in my life? Because if I'm going to take on something new, if I'm going to believe in something, then there should be evidence demonstrated in my life let's take on the aspect of education once you take a course you are looking at two aspects of your life you take you sign up for the course you take the course you enter the course and you have knowledge okay you're gaining knowledge you are in a different bracket now you have your pre-knowledge time and now you have your after knowledge time your after knowledge time you've gained knowledge in an area is going to alter change um, benefit your way of thinking and living why because you now have some knowledge that you didn't have before you have attained something that is going to help you better in life it's going to help you with decision making it could be in your career it could be family oriented it could be towards uh, gaining knowledge on how to handle your finances better uh, cooking better being a hairstylist whatever it is you now have knowledge that you didn't have before and now that you have this new knowledge it is going to shift it is going to change it is going to grow your thinking process about how you see things because now you have some knowledge that is going to help your outlook where previously you did not understand now you do now you have a better concept and so that old way of thinking that's the best analogy that I can give 
at this time. So the way that you previously were thinking before you came into this new knowledge that you did not have before is going to help you. And as you grow, you're going to obtain some new knowledge, right? Well, this is regeneration. You're obtaining something spiritually that you did not have before. Which is a way, and the knowledge that we are obtaining is how to live Christ-like, how to live holy, how to be of a royal priesthood, how to be of a holy nation, how to be of a chosen one. And we learn. How do we learn? We learn through the written word of God. All scripture has been written by the inspiration of God. We have the gift of the Holy Spirit. We have individuals who have been gifted to write prolifically to help us understand the Word of God. And that's how we learn. We are regenerated. And once we find out what's wrong with what I was doing, Everything has a perspective place. When we talk about fornication, okay? God desires that we, you know, for individuals who are going to be married. And so we have to find out the issue of when it comes to fornication. There are a lot of things dealing with that. You're looking about dealing with components of uh, commitment, trust, building relationships, foundation. So you have a lot of things dealing with why it's not good in the eyesight of God. You have adultery. That's going to go back with being in a committed relationship. God, and, and when we look at that, God oftentimes in the Old Testament had one of the prophets talk about adultery. What it really was. It was when the, the, the nation, the children of Israel, were not fully committed to their covenant relationship with God. And so whenever we teach on the acts of sinful nature, I think it's important to say why it's not pleasing in the eyesight of God. Why is it deemed as the lust of the flesh? Why? So that we better understand when you look at uh, fornication, um, sometimes, and it's not all the time, so I'm not going to put a label out there, um, it, because it's it's not dealing with a marital committed relationship. Sometimes you have a person who is promiscuous and have multiple partners. Well, God frowned upon that too, because in that sense, you're looking at serving other gods. And so there was a, everything that God says... And puts a thing on it that said this isn't holy, okay? There is a reason why he is saying that's not holy. And so when we're talking about the truth about faith, the truth about our walk with Christ, I think it is so important that we take the time so that the people may better understand that I need more than just my salvation of faith. I want to see, I want to see the change in my life. I want to see the growth. I want to see the maturity. I want to see uh, the changes. Uh, if you were once a very argumentative person, love to argue, love to 
be in discord uh, you, your day just didn't go well unless it was some kind of argument or discord going on well, that's your old nature right but now that you are in Christ Jesus which one of the fruit of the spirit is peace now that's what I look for in my life and so I pursue and I practice peace therefore I'm not going to engage in the things that I did because I have to take responsibility yes I do I have to take responsibility of those things and so I won't practice I turn from that I let that go. That's no longer what I want in my life. I want peace. We thank you once again for those who are tuning in to the balance of life. I just magnify the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. We honor him and we adore him. God is just good. And so I, I'm, I'm thanking God for where he has us in this time of teaching, a time of revelation, a time of just wanting to spend time in the word of God, expounding on the word to help all of us to better understand that we need change in our life an evidence of some change going on in our life. But if we're still in the same place before we accepted Christ, then did we really accept him? Was that lip service? Because coming into a relationship with Christ is there are going to be some changes in your life. Because we have the Holy Spirit who is there to uh, convict us to let us know, oh, you might have said that too harshly, um, convict us on, on several things that are not in alignment with the ways and the principles of God. But when there is no change, That, was there really any real acceptance of Jesus Christ? Was there real deliverance that took place? Or did we confess with our lips but not believe in our heart? There is more to our faith than just Oh, yeah, I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. But what's going on in the heart? Nicodemus started something. How can I be born again? I hear you teaching. But how can I get to that? I must be born again. Meaning I must learn how to live holy. Because in the natural, I learn how to live according to the human nature. But now that I am in Christ Jesus, I need to learn how to live in the spiritual nature of Christ Jesus. And if I'm going to survive... In my spiritual nature of Christ Jesus, I have to make some changes in my life. Thank you for spending time with me today here on The Balance of Life. Know that I absolutely love you without measure simply because I believe in the potential of each and every one of you. And if the Lord allows us to, we'll be back tomorrow at 1230 to share more in the word. Have a blessed day.